Go-Go music is a lifestyle. Go-Go music is about the best music ever created. Why me up, Chuck? Say what now? Why me up? Talk to me quick now. I'm Wiley Brown of the Chuck Brown Band. I'm also Chuck Brown's son. It started with my father, Chuck Brown. First, he was with the Los Latinos. He decided he wanted to start his own band back in the late 60s, 70s. He decided he was going to incorporate everything that he learned from blues and jazz and gospel, as well as the Latin feel. And, you know, he, he infused all of this and was like, you know what, I'm going to come up with my own sound. <laughs> and he, he came up with his own sound. He decided to, you know, keep the percussion playing. He found out that people ended up liking that groove even more. Once you start, you can't, you can't stop. You gotta keep the crowd when you, when you got them. So it just goes and goes and goes. That's where he came up with the name Go-Go, because it don't stop. I am Andre White Boy Johnson from Rare Essence. We were introduced to go-go music by Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers. Couldn't wait to be able to get into one of Chuck Brown's shows. Once we got started, he allowed us to open and we were hooked from that point on. We couldn't wait to get finished so we could hear him. This is Sugar Bear, the leader of EU, Experience Unlimited. I got the name from Jimi Hendrix. Back in 1976, that's when I, I met Chuck Brown. Back then, it was just called the Soul Searchers. We played with him at the Panorama Room in Southeast Washington. And it was uh, wall to wall people. And one thing that you know, he told me, he said, You got a lot of talent, but you have to play what people want to hear. And so I watched his set. And from there, that was my introduction to Go Go. I'm Buggy, AKA, they call me the General, and I'm the drummer for Back Y'all. First global band I ever seen was EU Experience Unlimited. And the drummer was Sugarfoot Rip. I was on my brother's shoulder. When I saw him play, I tapped him. I said, hey. He looked up. I said, I'm going to do that right there. I don't want to be no police. I don't want to be no fireman. I don't want to be no judge. I don't want to be no lawyer. No, I'm going to do that right there. Changed my life. Been in love with Gogo ever since. My name is Derek Holmes, and I'm the owner and lead vocalist for DC Vibe, that's spelled D-C-V-Y-B-E. In the early 80s, it was hard not to be introduced to Go-Go. It was always on the airwaves. It was always everywhere. I'm actually a relative of the late, great, one of our Go-Go Mount Rushmore faces, Anthony Little Benny Harley. And um, during a fan reunion, he actually brought a band to the fan reunion to perform. Go-Go runs through my veins. It's a fabric of my culture. It's a soundtrack of my youth. I am here in the rain to go watch Go-Go. I love Go-Go. I grew up on Go-Go. This community has been built on Go-Go. I'm the trombone king, TK, from the Experience Bandit Show. My first introduction to Go-Go music was from my father. He listened to a lot of Trouble Funk, Chuck Brown and Soul Searchers type of music when I was growing up. So that was my first really time hearing go-go music and falling in love with go-go music. The rhythm, the pattern, you, you got to love it. Bustin' Loose was really a, a big jolt. My father had been playing that, that song for about two years before he put it out. And then going into the 80s, it was like everybody wanted a piece of go-go. Mark, New Impressions, the drummer, maybe like five years old. I heard like a cassette from Backyard. Ever since then, I was ready to tap into Go-Go. I'm TJ from New Impressions. Mine had a funny story. I was riding in the car with my mother on the way home from church, and she played the Chuck Brown song, and I liked that. I liked that. So after that, it just caught my ear. I think the first band I did see was Backyard and Club Neon. I'm Kenny Martin, percussionist. So from when I was a little boy growing up in the DMV area, you know, I heard about go-go music, started hearing this sound, you know, I heard a few tapes and I was like, what is that? 
at that point, I developed this dream. The only thing in life that I wanted to do was to be in a go-go band. So we started in elementary school. It was five of us. Decided, hey, y'all, let's get together. Let's, you play this instrument, I play this instrument. Let's all get together and see if we can form a band. We added Little Benny, James Funk, Quentin Foots Davidson, and then added a lot of other people. Godfather, Tyrone Williams, DC, and John Jones, Michael Neal. Quentin Davidson and David Green, we were the five original fi founding members, I would say. Experience in Limit was a rock band, a black rock band. That's what we played. But, you know, being a black young man coming out of South Beach, they, they wasn't having it. I had to make that transition to keep keep the band relevant. They liked what we was doing, so I, it just kept evolving and kept growing and expanding, expanding. And then I was honored and happy all together because we started playing with a lot of bands that I Always wanted to go see, but we was actually on show with him. Chuck Brown Band, you know, we wanted to keep it going after my father passed away. A lot of the members are still original members from when my father was playing years and years. My name is Frank Sirius. My friends call me Scooby. Um, I am a lead singer of Sirius Company and the Chuck Brown Band. My band is a um, collection of a bunch of individuals who's been around for a while. We came together as Sirius Company to, you know, just put all of our talents together. And every time I get on stage, it's still an honor. Still, I still feel the presence of, you know, the Godfather himself. One of my birthdays, I actually called my cousin Lil Benny up to come and perform. And that night, I asked for Congos to be there too. So I had a Congo player. And afterwards, the response was so crazy, we just continued to play that way. So my band started in 2017, busking on the streets of DC. We started out as a street band. It was just me, a drummer, and a bass player. And then we grew from there to now we seven to eight piece. Our first um, major gig was by Layla Hathaway. She let us open up for her at the Lincoln Theater. I didn't join until 1990. And when they saw me play, they wanted me to play for the band. But I was more interested in playing with my Counterpart, hot sauce. Started on the playground. You know, you got the cowbell with the bells. He was making instruments out of the playground. Sliding ball was the bass drum. He had all the instruments down here. So we ain't need to play on the playground no more. Came down here every, you know, every time we got a chance, Miss Shannon let us in. Chuck Brown kind of came up with a way of keeping the people on the floor in between songs, and so he would play the pocket beat, or the, what we call the pocket. He would play the beat in between songs to kind of keep people dancing until he went to the next groove. In order to keep the people on the dance floor, in order to compete with the DJs and to compete with disco during that time, he's like, well, we got to keep this beat going. Go-Go to me is what reggae is to Jamaica. It's our baby. Most people around here grew up listening to the groups. If they didn't listen to them, their parents have listened to. I get countless times people tell me, I love the group because my father used to play your tapes when we were riding in the car, or my mother be cleaning up around the house. I'll tell you what's funny. Now I'm starting to see a lot of pioneers in hip hop. They are really respecting Go-Go and have it on its pedestal because they feel as though Go-Go is the only original style of music that hasn't been tampered with. When you hear Go-Go, you know that that's DC or the DMV, as we like to call it. To be honest, it influences mainstream rap and music these days too. Seeing my dad, you know, come across so many people, they tell that moment like, Chuck. I remember when you, we see you back in the 80s and uh, I snuck out the house, I got in trouble, but it was all worth it. A lot of people got their own personal stories of coming across, you know, crossing paths with my father. And even now, you know, whoever I meet, they end up having their own story that they want to tell. I heard stories, man, I saw you so and so and so and I've been playing drum. You the reason I picked up the sticks. I'm like, wow. The younger audience, they help to carry it on. That's how it's being passed on from generation to generation. It just keeps going and going. Thousands, generations of people grew up off our music and now they still captivated to to the day. That's what it's all about. That's what Go-Go music is. It's been here over 50 years, so it's still here strong. It's a great environment to see Go-Go music and to hear it live is unlike anything else in the world. That's a part of our culture.
We're Grammy nominated, and we made a collaboration with a lot of artists. We sold millions of records. Of course, we made um, our national fame with uh, doing The Butt, a number one movie, School Days, a number one video, The Butt, and a number one song, The Butt. When we were in the 90s, a lot of our songs that we played were really underground. We would get songs first. We like to keep our jazz first and base our funk and our go-go around jazz. We are one of the only bands in D.C. that's led by a trombone. We're Jafungo, but we're also a go-go band. Jafungo is basically jazz, funk, and go-go. So that's our own subgenre of go-go. We do it differently. So the fact that we were so young starting off, I think that set us apart from everybody else because people couldn't believe that these young guys are up here making this sound. We started to incorporate dance steps into the music. So it was a band and show. You don't even have to know who the band is. If you see that red and white on stage, you know that's Red Essence. When you come and hear the Chuck Brown band, you're going to hear that Chuck Brown vibe, that Chuck Brown, that Chuck Brown sound. We're very versatile. Most of the band members can play more than one instrument. Everybody does more than one thing when we're performing. So I cover music because there's a million songs out there and I don't have to play the same ones each time. I don't have to play them in the same order. Some are requested all the time, so because they love the way we do it, our version of it. So we have to play those or they're gonna be upset, right? Versatility, uh, musicianship, we have very talented singers. And our energy, our energy chemistry is just great together. My name is Ronald Moten, co-founder and CEO of the GoGo Museum. This is coming from the ground up, for the people, by the people, with the people, right? But also supported by other institutions, including our mayor, our city council, and others. GoGo represents the creative spirit, I think, of the never give up spirit of Washington, D.C. What we wanted to do was really expose and promote the GoGo because it's an experience in itself. All you got to do is be in one, just come one time, and you get caught up in the music just like the audience that's already there. And we tell people that a lot. They come in a skeptic, but they leave a fan. Right now, I'm playing for people I went to school with, their children. It's actually cool because you're getting recognized for being part of something 20 years, 40 years. I believe that you're going to see the whole world starting to incorporate go-go into their culture. It's a band in LA, it's a band in Ohio, it's bands in North Carolina, it's bands in Japan. It takes everybody, it takes the people to support new creations, new artistry, new music from these artists, and it takes the DJs who are our front line to support and play the music. You know, if we have nobody to play it after we make it, the people, it never gets to the people, or it stays in front of the people that you're able to garner at your show. Everybody is, is embracing go-go music. And that's the official music of Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. Now that we have our official music, it's a beautiful day. I cried, man. It was just like so special because we fought for this for so long. It's like, like, uh, like we hit the Powerball, man. We have so many great stories from the women of the Go-Go's, the forefathers of Go-Go, Miss Mac, Miss Neil, and Miss Pearl, who work with Red Essence and all these groupers and behind the scenes. The fact that we're around and people are still, you know, coming out. They just love the music. They love Red Essence. We love them right back. There's not a day that goes by when I'm out that I don't see somebody that was like, hey man, thank you for continuing to do your thing or thank you guys. I used to go see you in 1983 over here at the Maverick Room and you know, so I get, we get all those stories. And we really appreciate that. We really do appreciate it because they just love that experience so much that it stuck with them all these years. James Funk calls me and says, hey, I got a spot open in my band called Proper Utensils. I want you to come audition. However many days it was, I don't think I ate anything. I was so nervous. I go into this audition, everyone is there. Little Benny, James Funk, Go-Go Mickey, everybody's Blue Eye Daryl, they're all there. And here I am, this young guy, trying to get my feet wet in this Go-Go sound. And I go into the audition, 
and James Funk says, give me a 20 minute solo, just you. I didn't even flinch, I just started playing. And I played my heart out, it ended up only being two minutes or so. And he just kind of looked at me and basically said, you got the job. You remember when the floor was about to cave in? Oh yeah. That, that was a, I mean, everybody was enjoying it, so to the point where... We was about to be on the second floor from the third. That, that was an iconic moment for me. The very first time my mother saw me perform was on Soul Train. I came up out of a, a religious background. She would never come out to my events, but finally she, Soul Train was on, and guess who was on there? Me. She said, that's you, I'm son. Like, I said, that's me, yeah. <laughs> the late, great, Glenn Dallas bass player of Chuck Brown. And um, he gave me my style basically that I have now. And I would follow Chuck Brown around. I would pick him up and go to all the Chuck Brown gigs. I would just be backstage with Chuck Brown and just everything was Chuck. He asked Chuck, can I get on stage and sing? And Chuck said, yes. I got on stage and sang with Chuck. So that's when I knew I made it. Yeah, you could sing with Chuck Brown, you made it. One of the pivotal moments in Go Go was uh, Go Go Live at the Capitol Center, which was 1987. That was the first all Go Go show. We were so amped to do the show. And then when we're backstage and they, we're hearing them say, Rare Essence and 18,000 people are screaming. I mean, it, it just sent chills through us. It was like, whoa, this is big here. Walking out on that stage and actually seeing 15,000 people with their hands up or <laughs> waving side to side, like, that was an experience for me. It was incredible. When I first joined the band, we used to end the shows by me doing a solo. So bands thought, this is my first night. I'm going to do my solo. And I'm playing, and I'm playing, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm all the way in. I'm, and I don't do a lot of stuff that I used to do. I'm twirling sticks and I'm catching the drum this way. It's all about to fall and all this. And all of a sudden I feel, play them drums, boy. Play them like you own them. Give me your drums. Play them. It's Chuck Brown. Why did he do that? I went even faster. <laughs> but that, that's, that's, that's one of my most memorable nights right there. It's my first night playing with the band. For me, it was the first time my dad let me rap on stage. He let me rap on stage. He's like, all right, Wally, you ready? You ready, son? You ready, man? I'm, I'm gonna give you the mic, man. Don't freeze up. When he finally let me rap on stage, that was like a big moment for me. So one of my favorite moments Go-Go-wise was, we was one of the first bands to play that Black Lives Matter Plaza during the George Floyd protests. We went down there to support the protests and realized that it was a lot of hurting people out there. And we wanted to bring the music to kind of soothe the pain. And we came out there and people really loved the fact that we was out there. And they started calling us the People's Band. That's how we got our name, the People's Band, because we was out there daily. We, we perform around the city a lot. And we always say before any show that to have a community, you have to first have unity. If you don't have unity, you can't have a community. That means it takes all of us to be a part of this community to win. Go, go forever!